Hello traders at CMC Markets. This is Trevor Neal, Search Analyst at RRG Research and I am recording this weekly update on the morning of Friday the 23rd of February. Today we're going to look at of course the, the indices and, the, and some of the hot stocks including Nvidia and we will also be looking at some movements in the currency market as well. Now let's look at the weekly sampling relative rotation graph and we can see something outstanding here we've got uh, the the S&P the Nasdaq and the, in particular the FANG stocks or it could be the Magnificent 7 or it could be the Magnificent 1 wouldn't it really here moving in a northeasterly direction with a long tail very strong message we're getting here of increasing relative performance com compared to the the MSCI world and and also with positive momentum of the relative as, as well so it's going up and going up faster on a relative basis compared to the average of everything else. NASDAQ is the same but the tail is smaller so it's very concentrated in that area. The S&P is the same but the same direction but the, the tail is also small. But what has happened is we've swung around massively on the Nikkei so we're going to have a look at that today and the DAX is actually strong in itself but on a relative basis it's, it's the weakest of, of the group, if you like, despite being actually on the absolute chart, a strong chart, but the, the real strength is elsewhere. And the poor old uh, FTSE is still uh, languishing here in the lagging quadrant. Here is the, the FTSE, this is a monthly chart. We don't normally look at that, but I just want to show you how sideways it is moving around the 7,700 level. Yes, it's been to 8,000, but the RSI is at more or less at 50%. So that's a neutral reading. The MACD is neutral as well. With so much excitement going on in stock markets in the world, um, uh, let's go where the action is and not hang around here just because you're British, for example, to stick with the worst performing market. Now moving from left to right across the RRG, here is the, the DAX and this is a daily sampling of the DAX. We made the break to new highs here, 17,000 cleared at last and we're now at 17,300 jumping up as well. It's a major breakout, new highs with deep blue sky. Uh, everything is looking pretty bullish here. If it were to pull back the substantial support at uh, 17,000 um, and then further support at 16,300 but it uh, looks as though it is going to go higher. The MACD is positive and the gap is widening and here the RSI is on the way up and we uh, broke that high there and we the momentum is increasing on the, on the upside. As you can see, it's, it's going like a rocket. And this is a, a po very positive breakout and probably there'll be fear of missing out move um, to follow on this with the big gap that we have there. So despite being, you know, so far back in the relative performance, there's better games in town, if you like. This on its own, if you look to this chart, it's tremendous on its own. So let's look at more tremendous charts. Now this is a chart I don't think you look at too often. This is the uh, Nikkei where each bar is a year. And I needed to do that because we're looking at 1989 and 1990 uh, highs and we've just taken out those highs. So here we are in 2024 taking uh, four year, making new 34 year highs in this. We had the, this uh, lost decade and everything like that and which they ended up being more than one decade and we've recovered from that now so amazing move here so let's go to down to a daily chart this is very bullish isn't it here the, so the Nikkei now on, on its big break and it's an a new era. It's been a new era for the last few years in it and we've you know, been very friendly to it but it's made that uh, big break to new highs. Looking strong, all the markets are strong at the moment. The If it comes back then I think we could see support um, here at, uh, at 37,000, 36,900 here. I've drawn this uptrend line in here and made it dash because it's just marking higher lows but they aren't all lining up but I think we can say we're going up. 
lovely to see the 50 and the 200 day moving average gap widening and from a long term perspective the momentum is increasing from the, the, the daily MACD the gap is widening that's a very strong message too and here we're steady on the, the RSI and not looking at quite actually that excessive yet for this move but expect corrections if we do have a, uh, a short term correction then I would look for it to hold this 38,001 38,160 level, do it steadily there. But it's going up, high momentum in deep blue sky and looking like going further in the short and intermediate and also the long term as well. Now the S&P got left behind a bit as it hesitated for the last couple of weeks, but then yesterday the market burst higher and we got up to 5,000 over, over comfortably over the 5,000 level, just was having a lot of trouble with the 5,000 breaking, then gapping down and rallying, failing, and then now breaking. And I think it's now, this is it, and it will settle above there. But the 50, the 50 and 200 day moving average, you see big gap widening here. That's a very bullish story. The MACD has not yet crossed. It will, I'm sure it will cross by the end of the day. Uh, the RSI is pointing up uh, strongly, not at a very particularly high reading, just in the, around 70. Um, so um, it, uh, it can do more in the short term. Uh, we've got short term support now, yeah, at this high. So if we get, if you're lucky enough to get a pullback to around 5,046, so above the 5,000 round number there, don't wait for that. That would be, that would be great if that happens. Then you could have a protection at 4,900 if you wanted to, that the last low, higher low is a sensible place. That's the last time the buyers uh, came in into the market. But uh, short, intermediate and long term, They've all gone into line uh, together at this point. So here is the Magnificent Seven versus an average of the Magnificent Seven. So you would expect uh, generally that um, it would be hot, as much on the left hand side of the vertical as on the right hand side because it's an average of all of them uh, there. And we've got, of course, as you would expect, that long tail on NVIDIA um, and pushing strongly in the northeasterly di direction, so the, uh, increasing in relative uh, performance to the average of the group and, um, and also with positive momentum. Same too with uh, Meta as well, a uh, big uh, push up there. Uh, Microsoft is holding around the average, like Google holding around the average, Amazon too, Apple slipping a bit, and Tesla is the sick one of, of the group. Let's start with the sick one. This is the daily chart of, of Meta, and given what we're going to look at in a, in a moment, um, it, uh, it's, you know, really it's uh, just bouncing in a, almost an you know, intermediate term bear market. Um, it's supported at uh, 175. It's got resistance at 200, of the, the round number 202 up here. It's under pressure. The, the RSI has come up now to 60, so that's looking fairly good. And the MACD is also positive as well. So maybe this reverse head and shoulders pattern here, if we could break that to a too high, we could flick up and because the wind is blowing so strongly that even the turkeys uh, can take off. This is really alone in that uh, Magnificent Seven group to have a chart which looks like this. Looking at uh, Google Alphabet, it's, look at this chart, that's not that great either. The MACD is negative, although the gap is narrowing. The RSI has come up from 35 from below, so that's, some people consider that a, a buy signal, and that low would be the obvious place to offer yourself protection. There is resistance at uh, 150, and then of course at the high at 154. Um, there's further support at uh, 136.70. So this may be a catch-up type uh, trade, possibly, uh, presenting an opportunity for not buying into the things which are already leading and therefore very dangerous, but uh, looking for the opportunities in the ones which are less valued. Here's another one which I was going to say would, was presenting opportunity, but it's already jumped up, the, which is Microsoft, because it was come back to support at this low. Here it has held that support, and what I was going to say was that it was a good place uh, because you had nice uh, close protection at level, which would have been through this 397 level and and then uh, for any movement to the upside to follow it. So I think that is the right thing to do. There is resistance. 
at 420 but I don't think that will be too much and with the wind blowing so strongly bullishly I think that the MACD is narrowing towards a crossover and the RSI has come up from a low reading. A dip below 50 in an uptrend is often a buy signal for many people um, but it's jumped through there so be careful uh, with it but I think it will follow through and go on and and the resistance it won't find too much resistance at 420. Now we come to the last two this Nvidia and Meta. Meta is, has been consolidating but it's looking it's at the top end of the trading range. Uh, we, the trading range is above the, the gap so we jump from 406 up to uh, 454 and then we've got a range which is extending to where we are now at uh, 486 and I think this is looks like and uh, I get this message from uh, the RSI that it's going to break uh, to the upside so any slight upside move on this is going to break the, the declining highs of the RSI and break out of the range it gives you an obvious place to protect yourself which is below the this range that we've had for this month which is at 452 so just below 450 would be the right number but get out of the way fast because this could plop right back to around 405 really fast as it fills that gap but it looks as though it's on the verge of breaking out and joining the, the rest of the world of being really strong the MACD would then uh, cross up again having come back and touched uh, its signal line so this could be on the verge of a major breakout uh, but watch for a breakdown be very aware that a breakdown through 450 it would be would uh, could bring us a 50.4 uh, pretty fast because of the the gap that we have there and finally the, the star um, the nvidia the results of which um, shocked us um, and we were very nervous before and we see that from the amount of the fall here a lot of people must have dumped their positions it's very unfortunate and this caused the big gap and because it, the results were were stomping the results that's no there's no doubt about that and the the commentary and the prospects and the optimism for the future is is tremendous for this stock but there it is breaking up i would say now is this breakup is likely to follow through the 50 and the 200 gap widening here strongly the MACD which had crossed is rapidly coming back to uncross itself to go back positive the RSI which dropped below 50 coming up through 50 in an uptrend from below is a buy signal of course unfortunately it's across the gap but anything um, close um, above uh, 747 um, uh, looks like uh, uh, as good as you're going to get really for it um, of course if it broke uh, 664 then um, that's breaking the pattern rising lows but that seems unlikely at the moment uh, this looks as though it's, it's short intermediate and long term um, bullish cause you've got the support from the pre-nervous fall 750 area which is relatively close to, to where we are now so given the strong nature of it you don't often get a sensible support level so close to the current price. Now to the uh, currency markets. The, the dollar is strong generally, but it's had a little bit of drift. That means the other currencies are all heading in a northeasterly direction, but left of the 100% the, the line. So that's the dollar is strong, but it's weakened off recently. This is a daily uh, sampling of the RRG. And there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Obviously the yen we, won't, we must mention, but the Australian dollar I think is presenting an opportunity which just want to make, draw that to your attention. Now this is dollar yen of course, so upward move is strength of the dollar and weakness of the yen. But I, here's another chart which probably you don't look at too often and this is a yearly chart. This is a yearly chart of the uh, dollar yen and uh, you can see sorry this brings my analysis in from lower time frames here that we are testing the high of uh, January 1990 and the next re resistance uh, is from January uh, 1990 10 years before that um, and uh, that's at 160 and then that could release a lot of energy because we because it fell very hard there but I look at this low low lower low higher low what does that say to you it says reverse head and shoulders doesn't it so potentially we're in the process of breaking the 
neckline of the reverse head and shoulders and the implication of that would be a jump from the low to the neckline so that would be from actually from 80 up to we'll say 180 to 160 is 80 so 80 on 160 is 240 up here there. so reverse head and shoulders big base to support a big move up and don't forget we fell here really fast so now to a daily chart and you can see that this is bullish dollar uh, strong and we're close to a, a resistance level of 150.90 and we're moving up towards it. It is supported at 149.56 and strongly supported at 148. Um, for the market we've got this uptrend uh, with these higher lows. I've made it dash because they don't line up properly. At the moment uh, the MACD is actually neutral but the RSI is uh, steady and I think that we are likely to, to break to the upside and it's soon. It's a daily uh, a chart of the pound and this is a great market for trading uh, using mean reverting type trading, Bollinger Band uh, type trading, nimble trading of the market but yet the, the trends are lasting some days. And so that's very good if you get follow through in the market. So this is a trading affair, as you can see, it's moving sideways and it really is moving sideways for, for an extended period of time around 125, uh, one, sorry, 126, 127 area. But the range is 128 down to about 125 and trading inside that range using your bean reverting techniques is, is, will be good. Now the euro has broken a downtrend and this week and it looks as though it is turning. We've got low, lower low in here. MACD has crossed, downtrend line broken, surging quite volatile yesterday um, here, but still steady today in a little area of resistance which extends up to 109. Uh, but uh, there is a good trend in play here. And if you see this on the RSI, it's looking uh, very good indeed. So this one looks as though it's, it's following through. Um, if, you, if, you, if you were following this now, um, I would say that um, you've got good support, this area here. And, and you could use that if you wanted a very tight stop, otherwise the low here at uh, 107.64, but of course uh, this is probably too far away for anybody, is a uh, 107 area here. But it's looking good and strong and look, the momentum is good and it is, it's, it's got the benefit of the, uh, the breakout from the downtrend line. And talking about uh, breaking downtrend lines, this is the Australian dollar and it has broken this uh, downtrend line that we've had all year. We've now got a support from this low here at uh, 64.40, support from the trend line itself at 65.20. Moving up here, not sure I like these candles uh, though, uh, too much of uh, small bodies in, in the middle of ranges, that's not a sort of confidence sort of message uh, from the candles. But momentum wise it's looking excellent with the Bollinger Bands uh, positive and expanding and the RSI also moving up nicely, not yet overbought. So it's, it's interestingly at its 200 day moving average where it did stall the last time here, but if we part, manage to continue with the momentum and push through it, then we can expect follow through and protect probably some injection of uh, bullishness of Australian dollar if we go through uh, 66.26 level. So I'll leave you with that one new reversal um, of trend in the Australian dollar. No longer weak, now beginning, I think, of being strong. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. It's been a great pleasure to talk to you today. I hope it helps you. Uh, this is Trevor Neal from RRG Research. I wish you uh, good trading and may the trend be with you. Goodbye.